Hello and welcome back to the Lobo Designs channel. My name is Heather Lynn. I'm the owner of Lobo Designs and I'm here today with a quick overview of how to set up your Adobe Illustrator interface to look like mine. I get comments from users and viewers a lot stating that your screen doesn't look like mine. You're missing a menu. You don't have a tool that I have. You're not sure how to access certain things. So I'm just going to do a brief overview of the user interface and how I set mine up so that you can have your screen match mine if you'd like to. You don't have to. If you're happy with how your user interface is set up currently, skip on to the next video because this one isn't for you. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to start from the left hand side of the screen over here with all the tools. I'll go through these menus here in this side and over here. And then I will show you how to access a few things up in the main menu, which is up here at the top. So let's start over here on the side where all of your tools are located. And I will show you how these tools are accessed and how you can make yours look like mine, because some of you may have, I'm going to move. Let's show you the first feature. Let's skip a little bit. So I'm going to show you the first feature in Adobe Illustrator. You can move any of these panels around. So just by clicking, I'm just um, left clicking and dragging on any of these tabs. You can line them up, like drop them in together. You can move them back and forth. You can pull them out and make them their own little menus if you wanna make your own um, layout. It'll snap to the other menus if you can see. So you can put these wherever you want, but this is how you access these. Okay, they are all their own individual islands. You snap them as you want them. So what I do is I usually keep Pathfinder and Align and I'll move them back in a minute, but I wanna show you something over here in your tools menu, tools bar, whatever you wanna call this. There's a little arrow, a double arrow, double chevron up here that if you click on will expand your tools into a two column layout. I keep it at single because there's a whole bunch of wasted space down here that we're not using. So why take up real estate on my screen if I don't have to? So clicking on that arrow again will make it one bar. So that's the first way that you can set up your tools. If you are seeing tools on my menu here that you do not have, they are either hidden inside these little uh, triangles at the bottom right. So you can either press and hold down. So click and hold down with your left click or you can right click on them to access any of the sub menus that are inside of these tools. So say you say I told you go to the direct selection tool and right now you technically don't have a direct selection tool because it's hidden inside of here. So most of these tools have hotkeys, but also they are hidden inside sub menus sometimes. So if you don't see a tool that I have on my screen, it's either hidden inside of one of these sub menus or if you click down here, this ellipsis three dots click here this is the edit tool this is how you edit your toolbar see how these are grayed out up here because i have them shown already and then i have a couple white um not grayed out ones down here if i click on these it'll make it an icon on the left hand side but if you see anything on my left hand menu here while i'm going over my tutorials that you don't see again it's either hidden inside of one of these little dropout subsections or you have to activate it by clicking on the ellipsis down at the bottom so that is how you access the side menu tools over here where it has your fill, your stroke and your colors. It has a little swap between fill and stroke here. You can activate or not activate these as well. So if you don't want to see this little bar here, you can click this and it'll go away. I just clicked show down here and there are others that you can turn on if you want to see them. If you don't need to see them, you can turn them off again, all a personal preference. But if you see anything in my tutorials that you don't see on your screen, this is how you add them. So now that we're done with that tool menu, I'm going to get out of here. Let's close that. And I'm going to show you how I line up my menus on the side. I personally like to have my align panel up top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to make sure that I leave space in this area because when you're in isolation mode, there is information that shows up there in a gray bar up at the top. So you don't see it right now, but you want to make sure that you don't put this over top of that because then you can't see it when you're in certain modes. So I'm going to put my align panel right here and I'm going to put my pathfinder just below it, but I'm going to snap the pathfinder. I'm not going to make it another tab inside of this align panel. 
I'm going to take Pathfinder and I'm going to hover over the bottom until this turns blue and I'm going to drop it to make sure that it becomes another island below the align panel. And I'm going to do the same thing with the image trace and layers. But for image trace and layers, I'm going to make those tabs. So what I'm going to do first is take the image trace panel. I'm going to drag it over here until this turns blue at the bottom, snap that in. And then I'm going to take the layers panel, drag it over, and I'm going to put that inside the image trace panel so that they are tabbed. If you want your layers panel to be underneath, that's entirely up to you. I don't often use the layers panel, so I just like to keep it out of the way because of the fact that I don't use it often. So that is how I line up these menus on the left. And then over here, I just keep the properties menu on the right hand side of the screen. Any of these menus can be collapsed or expanded. If you click this little arrow, if you want to make them smaller, that's again up to you. I'm talking about these little chevrons here. Each one of the island is going to have its own little chevrons. So you can expand it or collapse it because of the fact that the align and pathfinder image trace and layers are all in one right now. This little icon up here will collapse all of them if you only wanted to collapse one you would want to separate then you can collapse this down and you'll still have the rest out there i hope that makes sense so now i'm going to bring this down a little bit more expand this i'm going to put the align panel up top here and then i'm going to take the whole island bring it back up here and then we're good to go so again, as an overview, the tools are on the left-hand side on my screen. The align panel, the pathfinder panel, image trace and layers are on the left-hand side. Properties are over here on the right. And what you'll see with properties is it changes based on the tool you have selected or the shape you have selected. So right now I'm seeing the appearance panel because I have the direct selection tool highlighted. If I had the selection tool highlighted, you wouldn't see the properties as we saw over here on that side before with the colors and strokes and fills and whatnot. You will only see certain things in the properties menu when you have items selected. So if I create a square on this artboard, you will then see the appearance shows the fill, the stroke, the opacity, everything needed to change the appearance of this object. You will also see the align panel over here, which is the same align panel that you will see over here on the left hand side. And then you'll also have extra quick actions over here based on what you're doing to make your life a little bit easier. So if you wanted to do an offset path of this, this square you can set your offset path right here you can just click on offset path the offset path window will come up and it saves you from having to go into object path offset path so like I said these are shortcuts that will help you along the way sometimes you don't need them a lot of times they have hotkeys all a personal preference while we have this shape on the artboard I will show you what it looks like when you're in isolation mode so I'm going to use my V selection tool I'm going to double click on this object and then you will see that I am currently in isolation mode by looking at this gray bar that I mentioned prior up at the top so right now I'm only editing this square so this is helpful if I had a couple shapes on my artboard I'll get out of isolation mode for a minute let's create a circle I'm gonna switch that to stroke and let's create a rectangle and we'll give that a fill so we right now if i wanted to select all of these and then only work on this particular square i can double click on it so if i if i have all of these selected double clicking on the square i'm then in isolation mode so that when i make changes to this i'm not making changes to anything else i'm only making changes to the square itself turning it into a rectangle or so on and so forth and then to get out of isolation mode you can either click this little button here or you can hit escape on your keyboard to get out of isolation mode so that's another thing that i wanted to make sure i mentioned since i told you to keep this space open for when isolation mode is in effect now let's hop into the menus up at the top so we're going to go up here you have your basics in the file menu save open whatnot we're not going to go over everything in here i'm just going to show you how to make your screen look like mine and how to use the tools that i use so again a bunch of options in file edit a bunch of options in object we're going to go up into the view menu and you're going to go down to smart guides i want you to make sure that you have your smart guides checked off you can also hit command u or control u on your keyboard if that's easier the smart guides will save you a lot of time when you're aligning objects or you want to make sure that certain things are matched up properly because it will give you little hints on the screen in hot pink so that you can see what you're hovering over so if you can see here it says path that's a smart guide 
I'm going to bring this over here so you can see when I get this into center. Right there, you're not going to be able to see it if I move this, but you see that little center in hot pink? It'll tell you that this new circle is now in the center of this rectangle. That's a lot of help for alignment purposes. Same for if you were lining something up to the side and they weren't touching. So say you wanted this circle to be exactly right aligned to this rectangle, you can see the smart guide as soon as they're perfectly aligned or you could highlight them both and then do the right align if you'd like to but the smart guides are super helpful if you don't want to do a full alignment you can just drag around and they will light up as needed when you want to know if things are lined up properly and there's an intersect there are a whole bunch of options that will show up on your smart guides but those are super helpful especially when resizing a whole bunch of things can be used when you're using the smart guide. So again, you can turn them on and off by hitting control U or command U on your keyboard or going up into the view menu and either selecting smart guides to turn them on or selecting it once again, removing that check mark to turn them off. Rulers are also helpful in Adobe Illustrator if you need them. To show your rulers, you can go under the view menu, go to rulers, show rulers, or hit command R or control R on your keyboard. And what you'll see is you'll then have ruler measurements up here and then down the side as well if you need them. Command R will make them go away. I don't use rulers often because the smart guides are super helpful, but that's how you would turn them on is just command R or control R on and off. Up in the window menu is where you control what you're seeing as far as these islands go. So if for some reason you don't have the align menu open, you don't have Pathfinder open, you're missing layers, you can go up into the window menu and you wanna make sure that the island that you're looking to see is checked off. So right now we're seeing the align panel, the image trace panel, the Pathfinder panel, properties is on the right hand side. We're also seeing layers but the layers is hidden in a tab, so it's not highlighted. If I were to highlight it, it will hop out into its own island. Up here, when you're in the window menu, you also want to make sure that inside the toolbars option, you have basic selected. You can use the advanced uh, menu if you'd like, but it changes a lot of things and adds a whole bunch of stuff on the left-hand side that for me isn't needed. So I go with the basics just to make sure that I don't have a whole bunch of stuff taking up real estate on my screen that I don't need. And that is pretty much the overview of the window menu and the view menu up at the top. There are properties that will show up at the top. Again, if you have certain items selected, I have this circle selected, so you're seeing the properties up here that I can change. And then the last thing that I wanna show you is you can hide your artboard, which is this rectangle. Apparently I'm working on a 12 by 20 inch artboard because that's the sheet size that I use inside my laser for the most part. But if for some reason you wanted to see this without the artboard, say you wanted to see what this looked like if this line wasn't going directly through your circle, you can go into command shift H as in Heather or command shift H as in Heather again to turn it back on. So again, command shift H will hide your artboard. Command shift H will show your artboard. And if you are hiding your artboard, make sure that when you are exporting or saving that you do show your artboard because right now, if I were to export this as a certain file type that is paying attention to my artboards, it would either ignore this shape up here altogether or it would chop it in half, which is normally not ideal for a design. And that concludes this tutorial. As always, feel... And that concludes this tutorial. As always, feel free to join us in the Glow Create group on Facebook for additional tips and tricks on how to use Procreate and Adobe Illustrator beyond the screen to turn your digital artwork into physical products. If you enjoyed this video and would like to be notified of future tutorials, please hit the like button and subscribe below. Until next time, this is Heather Lynn of Lobo Design signing off. I'll holla at you later.